Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I approach mixing bass and we're gonna do this in three different tracks, three different bass sounds and three different kind of perspectives and approaches to how you might pull a different tone depending on what your project needs. So for our first one, we'll be looking at a deep kind of fat bass sound. Our second one is gonna be a bit more of a mid-range punchy bass tone. And then our third one is gonna be a bit more aggressive, a bit gritty. So for our first example, we're gonna take a look at getting that deep, fat, warm bass tone. And for this example, it's a bit of a country pop ballad. So you get the idea, it's a nice, big, warm, fat country track. All right, let's check out this bass tone. Make sure you're not just listening off a phone speaker, chuck some headphones on, or go down and watch this on your computer in front of your monitors and get a good idea of what's actually happening here with the low end. So I actually played the bass track and I used my Fender Precision and we used fingers to get that nice warm round bass tone. And all we did was run through a Sans amp. These aren't the actual settings, but it has a parallel out. So we take the clean DI out and a bass tone from the Sans amp. And then that's running into Logic. So you can see here, we've got our bass bus and in that we've got our bass DI and our bass Sans amp signal. So we're gonna just turn off all this processing and have a listen to what these sound like. So this is the DI sound. So, you know, pretty standard. And then here's our Sans amp sound. So you can hear it's a little bit more scooped out, a bit more of that Ampeggy kind of sound, a little bit of click to the top end, tiny little bit of drive in there with it to add a little bit of that tubey warmth. And then I've blended these together. So kind of getting the best of both worlds. We've got that kind of scooped out Sans amp sound, and then we're bringing back in a little bit of the mids with the DI. So both those signals are being sent here to our bus. And then the first thing I added was an Ampeg bass amp. So we just have the Plugin Alliance Ampeg B15N. I generally reach for this when I want something that's kind of punchy. It's not super subby, but it does have a nice thick low end to it. And it's a little bit dirty sounding. The first four presets here, give you a great starting point, solid bass or the rock bass. And these kind of four presets generally land me somewhere where I like this B15, the sound. So I've gone with the rock bass plus horn preset and pretty much just pulled the power soak down. And that's pretty much the preset as is. So let's have a listen to this. So I really love what this does. You can hear the bass just has a more polished kind of sound after it's passed through this. Then we're just following this up with an 1176. Now it's worth noting that when I track bass, I track through a compressor. So generally I'm running it through either like a, a warm audio 1176 or like my AudioScape Opto and it's getting a bit of compression on the way in. So it's already a fairly even signal. And this is just a couple of extra dBs to rein it in even more. Now following it up with a tiny touch of EQ, it's not much going on here. Six and a half dB cut at 305 Hertz. generally just not a very welcome frequency in bass. It just adds a bit of mud to the mix. Not saying you can't have 300 hertz in your bass, but for this mix, taking a bit of that out just made the bass sound a bit richer and warmer. And that is all the EQ I did on the bass. Shocking, I know. And then just some limiting after that. having that limiter on the end there, even if it's not working hard or it's just above where the signal is, if you get a stray peak, it's just gonna catch it and stop it from coming through. And lastly, just a little bit of sidechain compression, just using the stock compressor in Logic. And we've just got a fast attack, fast release, sidechain is set to the kick in, and that's only doing a couple of dB of gain reduction. This was our last goodbye. So 
every time that kick hits, tiny little bit of compression, pushing that bass down, just helps the kick to be a little bit clearer and for the low end to not get too cluttered. Before processing. So you can hear we've got a little bit more presence there. This is helping the bass cut through a bit more, but that low end's nice and fat. Oh, this was our last goodbye. I didn't know. I'd be left here crying. I wish I knew. And that's it for our thick, fat bass tone. So generally you're trying to get a good tone on the way in, and then you don't have to do as much as you can see here. The DI and the CNZ amp sounded pretty good. And then this just kind of polished it up a little bit. So that's a pretty simple approach to bass. Didn't do much at all. Didn't EQ it too hard. Just got a nice bass tone. Never underestimate the level, like setting your fader in the right spot. You can play around with EQ and cutting this and cutting that, and you could have just brought it down or you could have turned it up a little bit. So sometimes you don't have to do heaps and heaps of drastic EQing. It's just literally about getting the volume right and getting it to sit in the mix nicely. So for our second example, we're looking at something with a bit more mid-range, a bit more tone, that's gonna jump out of the mix a bit more and the bass is gonna be a bit more of a feature as opposed to just fat, thick low end that's making the mix sound nice and full. So this next one is from a track called Living 3 and it's by a good friend of mine named Jesse Files who goes under the name Amber Way. So make sure you check out the description link below where you can check out his song. It's an absolute banger and it's got a bit of cowbell in it as well. So you should definitely check it out. Absolute banger. Let's hear this bass and solo. Such a good bass sound. So it's a little bit gritty, a bit mid-rangey, and it just pops out of the mix and you can hear all those notes and it sounds great. So when you're going for a bass tone that needs a bit of clarity, using a pick is always a great way of doing this. I know there's some bass players out there who are like, hate playing with a pick and say, oh, you play with a pick, you're, you're no bass player. But seriously, it's just a tool to get a sound. So if you're one of those bass players, suck it up, pick up a pick if you need one and stop being a big baby. So a very similar setup to the last song. We've got the bass bus, and in that we've got a bass DI and a process bass sound that we had when we were tracking. So I'm fairly certain we used Jesse's Kemper, and if we didn't, we ran through the Sans Amp again. So it sounds very Sans Ampy, so maybe it was, but um, maybe it's just a patch in his Kemper. Let's have a listen to our processed Kemper sound. Now let's have a listen to our DI bass sound. There's the honk. Jesse was playing with his precision bass as well. Can't even say it. Preci precis precision. Pre 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 precision. So Jesse was playing with his American standard precision bass, and it's just such a classic bass to use in the studio. It always gets great results. But you can hear it's quite a honky bass sound straight off the bat. And that's ready to be sculpted into anything really. So we have a blend of our bass DI and our process bass sound, which sounds like this. So having that DI in there just gives it that little bit of mid range. We need a little bit of that honk in there. Helps it cut through on the speakers a little bit better. So our first plug in on the bass bus is the UAD Ampeg SVT VR. So this is a nice, punchy bass amp sound. So you can check out the settings, grab a screenshot if you want, but that is setting us up for a nice thick bass sound there. So we're just adding a little bit of compression after that. We've got the UAD 1176 LN Rev E and I used the preset JK bass and it just works, sounded good. So pretty much the kind of settings I would load anyway, a fairly fast attack. Anywhere between three and five is where I'm gonna land the attack when I'm doing bass and then a fast release, four to one. Can't go wrong, you just get a couple of dB of gain reduction. And then we're going into Slate Digital's VMR. 
And we have a bunch going on here. Because I'm wanting the bass to be punchy and really cut through in those upper mids a bit more, we've got a roll off up to 121 hertz on this custom EQ. Now the roll off here is actually really gentle. I'm not sure what it is. It's probably six dB octave. And then we just got a little boost at 100 hertz. So we're focusing the bass more in that higher low end as opposed to in the subby region. Then we're doing a little cut at 400 hertz. That kind of 300, 400 hertz region is always a little bit muddy on the bass. And then a bit of a boost at 2K add a little bit of grit, and then a little bit of presence at 10K. Then I follow that up with the FGN, which is like a Neve EQ, and we're just doing a boost at around 800 Hertz. 800 Hertz is a pretty interesting frequency on bass because it can be kind of muddy, but it can also be really cool and help the bass to cut through with a little bit of that honkiness. It's not like the low mid honky, it's kind of like high mid honky. And then there's like half a dB at 80 Hertz. So just boosting back in a tiny little bit of that low end. And then we're using the bass guitar Chibi Opto setting on the FG Stress and then a bit of a trim on the end just to level this out a little bit. It just gives it heaps of character. And then typically what you're gonna find at the end of my bass chain is just like a Waves L2, just to catch any peaks, rein the bass in. So we're working a bit harder on this track. really locking that level in on the bass. And then a little bit of EQ post limiter. So this is an EQ that would have appeared as the mix progressed and I needed to tweak the bass tone a little bit more to make it sit in the mix a bit better. So we did a little cut around 250 Hertz, little cut around 70 Hertz. That would be where the kicks fundamental would be hitting. And we've just done a little cut there just to kind of make a bit more room for the kick and the bass to live together nicely. A bit more boost in these mids, really just trying to bring that mid range out. We've gone for around 670 Hertz. And this is gonna help it cut through the little speakers a bit better. Tiny little cut at 2.2K, 1.7 dBs, just to get rid of maybe some harshness, clickiness out of the pick sound. Pretty cool, pretty punchy, a little bit dirty, but that's the thing with bass. Sometimes having that dirtiness, like when you listen to it in solo, it's like, ah, oh, it's not such a smooth, nice bass sound. But when you put it in the mix of everything else, you're like, oh yeah, that works really well. Like there's so much going on. Now the bass actually cuts through and it doesn't sound as bad when it's with everything else. And then lastly, same deal, a bit of sidechain compression with our stock Logic compressor. Fast attack, fast release, sidechain to our kick. I love those bongos, they're so silly, but it sounds so good in the mix. So here's our tone before. And then after. Sounds sick. So that's one way you could go about getting that nice mid-rangey punchy bass tone. These EQ moves are not going to be something that you can use on everything and they might not work on anything else besides this track. But the idea being that you kind of push the mids a bit more, you take a little bit of the sub out of the bass, make it a bit more focused in the upper low end as opposed to the subby low end and then you're going to start to get that bass to kind of sit out of the mix a bit more as opposed to just being this deep rich sound. Okay, so for example three, we're looking at that aggressive, dirty bass tone, and I've got a song here called Starfish, and it's by a guy named Mitchie Louder, and you can check that out in the description link below. I'll have a link to this song. Starfish, I want a pet starfish, so I can put it in my room to feed it bread. All right, so you get the idea. I don't really know what the song's about. It's about a pet starfish, but it's a fun song, and that bass tone is so cool, super exciting and punchy. Such a cool bass sound. Now, very similar to the other songs, we've got our bass bus, we've got two channels here, but these are just duplicates of the bass DI. We didn't use a sans amp, we just went straight in with a DI signal, and the bass sounds like this without any processing. Very stock standard, just <laughs> clean DI bass sound, right? We've got a blend of two different bass amp plugins here. 
So they're both by Neural DSP. So the first one is the Neural Parallax, and the second one is the Neural Dark Glass Ultra. And we have this one on the, the Vintage Ultra, and I'll explain why in a second. So our main bass sound is coming from the Parallax. So we're using just a preset, Dave Terra Grit, and this just sounded really good to me. I didn't feel like I had to tweak any of the settings in here. It got me pretty much the sound I was looking for. Just a great plugin, just changes the tone dramatically in such a pleasing way. So then on our duplicate channel, we have set up the Dark Glass Vintage Ultra. Let me show you the difference between these. Now I know what you're thinking when you listen to that, you're just like the B7 sounds way nicer, way cleaner, but that dirtiness of the vintage is so cool and it helps the bass to cut through really nicely. So we're using this one a little bit lower in the mix beneath the parallax setting that we have. And that blend sounds like this. So it just makes it a little bit dirtier. Okay, so first plugin on our bass bus is Slate Digital's VMR. We just have the VCC. So whenever I load up VMR, this is already there. And that just adds a little bit of that analog desk sound. So we've got it set to the Brit 4K and that's just a little bit of SSL vibe in there. It's very subtle, but across a bunch of tracks, it does add up to add a little bit of flavor to your mix. Now the first plugin after that is our FGN, so the Neve EQ, and we're boosting 1.5 dB at 3.2K, just to get a little bit of that pick grindy kind of sound. And then we have a little bit of a boost from 80 Hertz with a low shelf, 1.8 dB, and then a high pass filter at 35 Hertz. So just rolling off from really, really low end there. And then we follow that up with the FG Stress, and I've just used the aggressive bass guitar setting here. And I find these presets are pretty good, and then you can just tweak them a little bit to match how much gain reduction you need, play with the attack and release, but generally, Pulls up a fairly good setting to start with. A trim on the end just to pull it all back. Fattens it up, brings the pick out a little bit more in a nice pleasing way. Then we follow it up with L2, classic Spinlight Studio setting here. You can see that's just working. It's just pinning this bass in place, and that's what I want. So I want that bass to be slamming and at the same level consistently. And then again, tiny bit of sidechain compression. A little bit of this goes a long way. You don't have to have heaps of sidechain compression. If you feel like you need the kick to really punch the bass down, you can get this working heavier. But generally, I have it doing like one to two dBs, and that's pretty good unless I need something a bit more exaggerated. This song's so fun. I just remember Mitch saying, can we put in some DJ scratches? And I was like, sure, why not? So pretty cool. We've taken a very bland, typical bass sound like this. And then turned it into this. So pretty awesome. Hopefully these three examples have given you some ideas to run with and to try in your mixes to achieve similar results and get a nice bass tone for your tracks. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. I know there's a lot of people who watch videos and they don't like to give out those likes so easily, but if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you can keep up to date when I post videos, and please leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's any plugins that you like to use on bass to get some really good results, I'd love to hear. If there's anything that you're keen to see me cover in a video, make sure you drop in a comment below. I'm always looking for new ideas for content to create for you guys. And if you wanna support the channel, check out the description link below, check out my website, grab yourself a drum sample pack, and that really helps support the videos and the time spent making this stuff. If you're keen to watch another video, make sure you stick around and check out this one coming up. I run you through setting the perfect mix bus compression.